Hey everybody, Nurse Geek back here. I'm um, gonna apologize in advance for my dog, so if they bark, I do apologize. They bark at everything. Um, I just geeked out so hardcore that I couldn't contain myself, and I needed to share this with the people. With the people. Um, I a little bit of a backstory though. My husband will go on these like I'm gonna go buy comic books, and I'm like, okay, whatever. And he goes, and if he sees something that I might like, like, at one point, I think he went to the comic book store, if I'm not mistaken, and I didn't go with him. But if he sees something that I might like, he'll pick it up for me, within reason. And he had gone through, like, a bunch of magazines. He found me, actually, this one, The Next Generation. Yeah. This is pretty cool. It's from 1993. A card with hair in here. I'm not kidding. Um, just some really cool stuff. So, I was, like, totally excited. Well... I have another magazine that was, of course, in plastic, but I took it out because I wanted to read it. And I was just sitting here, and I was going through my comic books because I thought, oh, I'm going to, you know, just sit here, chill out for the night, and read some comics, right? Sounds like fun. And, uh, of course, I have these comic books and these magazines. So, I have this one. He picked this up because he thought that was Worf on it because it says Star Trek's other alien. It's Starlog. It's a Starlog magazine. What captured my eye about this, what what actually made me, and this is weird, because what actually made me pull this out of the plastic to open was this on the cover. Doctor Who's Companions. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, because so I'm a Whovian. I see that, and I'm just like, you know, what's that all about? So... This is Starlog number 42, and at the very top here, the, in this blue, it says, Inside Bonus Final Disc, see page 18, Greatest Themes from uh, SF Movies and TV. Usually when you see something like that, it's like one of those card inserts, you know what I'm talking about, like that you fill out and you subscribe to stuff, and or it's like something you got to fill out and send in and they send it to you. So, I didn't really think much of it. And I'm just reading the cover, and I'm like, Star Trek's other alien exclusive interview. Um, and I think this is the Klingon Commander from Star Trek The Motion Picture, if I'm not mistaken. If anybody knows? Um, I think he's a Klingon Commander, but my husband, of course, thought he was Worf, not one, not even Worf. Um, previews, uh, preview, Childhoods, and um, Filmation, Flash Gordon, uh, Science Fiction and Comics, Part 3, the 30s, uh, Cosmos SFX, Retrospective Woman in the Moon, Wild Wild West Revisited, and Doctor Who's Companion. So it was kind of, you know, really interesting. Again, paying no attention to the little blue strip at the top saying, you know, you get a free record, a free vinyl record, right? When I opened it the first time, it opened to page 18, or where the free thing is. Again, if they stick these little inserts in, it's just going to open to that page, right? And this is what I find on page 18. This was literally the first thing I saw when I opened this book for the first time. That, my friends, is a real record stuck in the book. It's a sh record. It's a sheet. And it has a back. You could pull this thing out of this book and put it on a record player and it would play. Okay? So, I was like, what is this? <laughs> like, oh my god, it's like actual vinyl in the book. Okay, it's uh, Greatest Science Fiction Themes. It's a sampler. What I found so interesting about this was, there's a spot here. It says, place coin here if sound sheet slips. Anybody who's ever used a record player will know that if, you know, it starts to skip or jump, you put a coin on it for weight. They actually have a little spot here. And this, because this is thin, this is like a sheet of paper. This, okay, this is like a sheet of paper. <laughs> okay. Um, and it's square. So, yeah, be careful of those sharp edges as it's spinning. You know what I mean? Um, if you put it on, like, a smaller record player, those edges are going to, like, hang out. Um, that <laughs> could do some damage, I think. Um, but it's got, it's a sampler. So it's not, um, a full, 
uh, full-fledged record, obviously, because it's kind of small. So it's just a sample of music. We've got um, the greatest science fiction themes, Neil Norman and his cosmic orchestra. So it's not the actual themes like that we're used to. It's um, it's an orchestra, a cosmic orchestra. And what it has on it is Twilight Zone. These are the samples. Twilight Zone, Buck Rogers, Adventures of Superman, Close Encounters, 2001, Empire, Star Wars. And on the back, it has actual full tracks, full full songs. Um, theme from Battlestar Galactica and Radar from the Day the Earth Stood Still. A friggin' record in a book. I was like, how old is this thing? Right? And I'm thinking, you know, six, seven years old. 10 years old, maybe, maybe 12. I mean, come on, I've got Metal Edge magazines that are like from, you know, 89, you know, 88, 87. I open up to the first page of the book, okay? First page, first page. This is what I see. January 1981. And it's also down here on the bottom, I don't think you can see that, but... And this January of 1981. So we're talking New Year here. New Year 1981. Okay. So uh, this sparks some some real you know interest at this point. So in this we have, I, and I, I just wanted to go through a few things that, that I found interesting in here. Um, they're talking about movies, upcoming movies. Um, it's called Log Entries, okay? And, uh, the latest news from the world of science fiction and fact, okay? So, they're talking about this, um, people who are already eyeing their 1981 calendars, wondering what they could look forward, to, wondering what they could look forward to. Studios were cautious because of the crippling actor's strike, made plans for 1981, simply guesswork. Fortunately, a number of projects were finished before the strike began. Okay, let me go back. A new decade opened to a slow start, and before the fall began, people were already eyeing their 1981 calendars. Okay, that's, that's what the start of that was. Uh, fortunately, a number of projects were finished before the strike began, and principal photography had been completed on others. The big movie for 1981 will be the June release of Warner Brothers Superman 2. Um, Christopher Reeve, Margot Kidder, and the rest of the cast return in a two-hour adventure that promises to be better than the first. I can't say that I really liked it better than the first, but... Um, it was good. Then it goes in to talk about, um, Phantom Zone villains briefly seen in the first movie come to Earth and decide to rule it, and the film will open in England at Easter and here in June. The George Lucas, Steven Spielberg movie Raiders of the Lost Ark starring Harrison Ford and Karen Allen is also scheduled for June release. Raiders of the Lost Ark. So they go through a bunch of movies from my childhood, like um, Altered States, Incredible Shrinking Woman, um, you know, all these Clash of the Titans, all these movies that were, you know, scheduled to be released. And as I continued reading, one of the things that I found so interesting about this was you have to remember, this is 1981, so this is, um, you know, at the height of Star Wars. Star Wars was released in 1977, I believe. Um, but it was at the it was at the, the height of Star Wars. It was very, very popular at this point, because we, we had just gotten um, The Empire Strikes Back. And uh, it says... You know, it goes on, it says, um, as for comic characters making it to the movies, there are talent hunts underway for women to play Brenda Starr 
and Sheena, Queen of the Jungle. Bo Derek rumored at various times to be playing both. Um, I don't remember the name of the woman that actually played in Sheena. There was a movie called Sheena, but I don't remember what her name was. She's gorgeous. I, I know what she looks like. See her in my head. I don't think it was Bo Derek though. Um, and then it goes on to say, spot aligning her with Tarzan and supporting role, blah, blah, blah. While work on the Revenge of the Jedi in Superman 3 will no doubt begin in 1981, look for the following heroes to make it to the screen in the next year of so. Batman, the Silver Surfer, Annie, the Shadow, Aliu, Conan, Ghost Rider, and most recent, acquisi most recent acquisition, Swamp Thing. What that whole paragraph, like anything you should have taken out of that whole paragraph was the Revenge of the Jedi. Now, if you know anything about Star Wars, you know the first three Star Wars movies. Um, episode 4, A New Hope. Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. And Episode 6 was The Return of the Jedi. Before... Um, the Return of the Jedi was the Return of the Jedi. It was the Revenge of the Jedi. There were actually posters and stuff made that say the Revenge of the Jedi. And I don't remember exactly what it was that made them change it, but it, it, it did get changed. So having this in print where it referred to the Return of the Jedi as the Revenge of the Jedi geeked me out hardcore. I And you might think that that's something so trivial and stupid, but it's right there right there and 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 it, you gotta remember this is pre-return of the jedi so work on the revenge of the jedi in superman 3 it's right there and vader and flames what's that all about the official star wars fan club has released their first exclusive offer to its members a replica cat replica of the cast and crew patch from the empire strikes back that's freaking cool. And they go in to talk about... Uh, oh, anyone interested in joining the official Star Wars fan club can inquire with a self-addressed stamped envelope, because we didn't have email back then, and receive membership application flyer by sending to Post Office Box 8905 Department, SP, Universal City, California, 91608. There's a little spam there. I don't know what that's... Oh, right here. Nothing. Um, okay, so another flash in the pan. Oh, uh, spectacular art por portfolio. A 1981 calendar. A space art calendar. Six ninety-five each, not a dollar each for postage and handling. Allow four to six weeks for delivery. Also available at Walden Books, B. Dalton Booksellers, and other fine books. Walden Books was the shit. Okay, so let's just keep going on and see what we got here. Um, Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, is alive. It doesn't say who's going to play. This might be, be before the Sheena movie that I'm thinking about. Um, Detective Comics 500. The 500 issue to celebrate DC Comics named after Detective Comics was planned a very special package. I wonder how much that is. Like if you were to find that. Anthony Daniels and Mark Hamill reprise their roles for the Star Wars radio show. Fangoria. Now, why don't they have these magazines anymore, do they? Because, like, The Shining... I think they do. I think they still have Vanguard magazines. 
Alice in the Jungle, Disney Abelia. Wow, just 350 for back issues, 350 each. A one year subscription, six bi monthly issues, 998. Boy, the 80s were great. A thinking cap, or where can I get a patch? Who's this? Peter Boyle. Star Wars Rebel Forces Con Am 27. Here's the orchestra thing, the, the movie, the little record act, actually. Emperor Ming. Ah, yeah, neither, neither scene was shown. Um, what is this? The Flash Gordon we may never see. I can see why they didn't show it. Look. <laughs> Emperor Ming's hand is like adjusting a view of Hitler and the SS. I mean, come on. <laughs> um. And it just goes into talk about, you know, other things. Um, the Star Trek's The Other Alien. Klingons. And we're talking, like, original series here because there's Leonard Nimoy and there's William Shatner. Back issues of Starlog. I mean, Kodak's animation guy. The Starlog Trading Post. Remember when books used to do this? They used to have like you could buy stuff. Star Trek greeting cards. Order all twenty-four cards today for only twelve dollars. Forest fantasy cards. Boy Who Saved the Stars, hardcover, $5.95. Starship Pendant, that is so cool. $5.95 each. If you were to find that now online, it would be like $200. I mean, it... Battlestar Galactica, Iron On Transfer book. Iron on transfer. Uh, decorate t-shirts with many of your favorite space heroes. Remember back in the 80s when you used to do that? You used to iron shit on. Like they have these like. And then th then you'd wash it once and it'd start peeling. It sucks. So bad. Like it was so bad but it was so cool too, at the same time. You had like kittens and shit on this stuff. Um. See if there's anything else cool in here real quick before we end this video. But this book just really like brought back a lot of like real, you know, real memories. You know, like when you used to be able to actually get subscriptions to, you know, books. Like here, I mean, they're all three twenty-five, five fifty, four fifty. I mean, I would buy every single book on every single one on this page. Superman arrives. Um, and here's the Doctor Who. And for the record, it is actually, um, Tom Baker, sorry, I'm checking my email, um, that they're talking about in here, and, uh, it's Tom Baker's, um, Elizabeth, um, Sladen and Ian Martyr, so it would be Tom Baker as the doctor, um, because of the year, so... Am I getting? Um. Anyway, yeah. So I kind of like read through that a little bit, and uh, 
that was pretty interesting. Tom Baker, we know, was the one that wore the, the scarf. Um, and he was doctor from, I think, 74 to 81, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't remember which doctor it would be. Was it the 12th season? Yeah, I think it was the 12th season, so, I don't remember, but anyway, I think he was like the fourth doctor, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think he was the fourth. But anyway, um, it's just, mine, um, what is this? Like, I feel like I should know what this is. It's the Cosmos. I mean, it's mind blown. There's so much awesome in vintage magazines. Like, you know, especially science fiction stuff. And if you're a geek like I am, you love science fiction stuff. You love anything science fiction. Hulk episode got next month. Scanners. Flash Gordon spacecraft. The Hulk episode guide from The Incredible Hulk, we're talking, you know, um, yeah, Lou Ferrigno as the Hulk. And this says, Starlog number 43, on sale Tuesday, December 30th, 1980. So this book was actually, it actually came out before 1981. Unless it's a misprint. And this book that I'm holding is number 42. So a 43 is January of 81. Or a 42 is January of 81. Then I would assume 43 is probably February of 81. That comes out in December. So this probably came out in November of 1980. Or, um... October or November of 1980. This is a very cool thing to have. I would love to find more of these. And I think I'm going to go to the comic book store and actually search for these. I think my husband paid like two bucks for them. And I'm sorry, two dollars? All day. All day. But some of the things you'll get in these and you'll see and it'll bring back memories is just amazing. So, 1980s vintage sci-fi magazine. I hope you all geeked out because I did and this is just amazing so yeah. I gotta go see how much this is worth. Have a good one. Geek on my friends.